I am Jim Collison and live from Omaha, Nebraska in the Gallup offices in Singapore. This is Gallup's Call the Coach, recorded on March 9th, 2015. Call the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, and strategies to help get coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you have questions during this live webcast, we do have a live chat room available for you. It's right below the main video window. Most of you will catch the recorded version of this. And if you have questions about custom strengths coaching solutions for small, medium, or large organizations, you can contact us, coaching at gallup.com, or use the contact page right there at coaching.gallup. Dot com. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center. That's just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your coaching resources and training needs. And you can also catch the video and now both streaming and downloadable audio as well. Sometimes it's good to just download these to your phone. Take them with you as you go on the road, either in, your, in the car, on a plane, or in a train. We'd love to have you listen to those as well. They're available for offline listening over at coaching. Gallup.com. Sarv Atri is our host today. He works as a strength evangelist in Singapore. And Sarv, great to see you for another Singapore Call to Coach. I know the weather is always great over there, but uh, welcome to another Call to Coach. Thank you, Jim. And uh, it's good to be back on a Singapore version of Call to Coach. And we're trying out a different version today. Uh, you know, I have my very good friend and guest, um, He Guan, sitting with me. Uh, and you know, we'll try it out this time around uh, in this format. Um, like I said, you know, um, I am really glad that we have He Guan. Uh, he shares a passion of mine, which is looking towards youth development. To give you a little background on He Guan, um, he's a director and training consultant at Kingmaker Consultancy, uh, and he started his career as a teacher under the PSC Teaching Scholarship, uh, and has been training leaders in the educational and non-profit sectors for the past 16 years. So. A significant experience in the education sector and that's where he has developed his specialization in terms of coaching as well working with youth um, right across Singapore and the Asia um, region uh, he's uh, previously he's uh, designed cross-cultural experiential learning pro courses um, for character development and formation of high performance teams uh, and has partnerships that includes ones in South Africa Thailand India Indonesia East Timor and many cities in China. Um, he Guan, thank you so much for coming down for a call to code session Thanks, today. Sarah. And we would love to hear from you, uh, you know, your strengths journey starting with the top five. So let's start with, you know, hearing some insights from you there. Okay. Uh, actually, I started the strength journey about four to five years ago. I was introduced to a group of people called the Half Timer, and uh, they invited a strength uh, coach uh, from USA and. Uh, and uh, this person claimed that he was the intern to Don Clifton. He was an elderly man. And uh, after the night of, of uh, strength uh, coaching, we were so excited. And uh, immediately after that, I, I looked for the website to check whether there's this uh, certified coaching course. And there was none. So I started my practice as a strength coach then. And I'm always waiting for when is the, the first uh, certified strength coaching course. And when I heard that in Singapore, there's one, immediately I became the first batch of uh, uh, the, those uh, uh, coaches who signed up for the uh, strength uh, course, accelerated strength uh, course, yep. And my strength uh, top five, yes, my top five is a uh, uh, command, relator, command and relator. In fact, they do not exist uh, very often. And then the third one is a uh, uh, strategic, activator, then Futuristic. Thank you. He got an interesting story. He Guan was actually one of the first uh, person to sign up for our Singapore course when we launched this course in November. So he really, you know, made our belief stronger in this in the course itself because it, again, he came up, he came up to us the moment we launched this course that I want to sign up. He said, "Great, let's let's get you get started off," and that's how we really moved on this momentum of strengths uh, and our accelerated courses in the Singapore region. So thank you for sharing that, He Guan, and thank you for signing up as well. Um, like I said, you know, he's got solid experience working with students and with youth, um, and right across all um, our tools, right from Strengths Explorer to Strengths Quest and to Strengths Finder as well. Yes. From your experience, He Guan, uh, you know, since you've been coaching both youth as well as adults, right, 
how do you see the differences when you coach young students or young adults versus you know people uh, who are 18 years plus? Okay, I think I'd like to maybe think of a few points. The first point will be usually after training the adults, one of the things they will say is, are you not going to talk more about my weaknesses so that I can do a lot more things about weaknesses? But for youth, they don't ask that. They'll be very excited. They are, they'll be saying that, oh, I'm, I'm good in this. I can do this and that. And uh, so I think for adults, maybe for many years, people are talk, telling them about their weaknesses, their area for improvement. <laughs> That's why the very first thing they are still asking is, please talk about my weaknesses. I thought that is the first thing. The second thing is this. Uh, the, the piece that I use to coach adults a lot, I'll be using contrast, theme contrast. And that actually will be able uh, to bring out a lot of uh, differences because they work in team and they realize that team contrast is something that is very important. Either you end up with a complementary, uh, con complementary type of relationship or uh, relationships that are in conflict. But for youth, one of the most powerful thing I, I use is talking about the raw talent and how to develop it into mature strength. Because for youth, a lot of them are operating at the raw state of their talent theme. And uh, some of fun examples will be like, for example, uh, I have number one is command. So when I go to a place, I teach them about command. And command sometimes is uh, when it's in the raw state is could be a student who is defiant and could be a, 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 a type of gang leader that created a lot of trouble, uh, created a lot of crisis and is happy with crisis. Confrontation with the teachers excite them a lot. Yeah, so this is something that after we, we teach some of these students with command, they realize, that, oh, I thought I'm a defiant and terrible guy. You mean I have this talent? And because of that, the support and the, the environment will be able to just uh, help them to, to, to invest in the talent team and uh, to make it a mature uh, strength. And the other uh, common one will be like com uh, communication, whereby it's often misunderstood as the noisy one, the talkative one. And, you know, and then uh, after that, then they realize that, oh, I'm not a terrible talkative guy. Actually, I have this talent, but I need to know when to talk, how to talk, where to talk. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Now, we'd love to even hear a particular story, maybe. Um, you know, maybe somebody with command or communication, and how you help them move from the raw to mature state. You know, what sort of questions or activities, or what sort of things that you did with them that helped them move on that journey? Okay. Um, actually, I one of the example I quoted, uh, let's say for command, will be uh, for myself. Uh, interestingly, I have this uh, story. In my secondary school, that means uh, uh, it's between 13 to 16 years old, um, with so many teachers, I think there's only one person, one teacher who understand this, uh, this theme called command. And uh, using my example, actually, I, I, I gave them some insight about how they can grow in a command and how teachers, also train teachers, how teachers can groom those with command. For example, um, I'll be very good in mathematics and, uh, and I'm also very talented. And uh, every time what I do is that after 15 minutes, I know everything and because of that, the rest of the period, I'll create trouble for the class. Yeah, but my maths teacher is very, very good in spotting talent. Number one, he knows that uh, I'm good, I'm talented in maths. Second thing, he knows that I have this command. Of course, he didn't know the strength language. So this is what he told the class. After I finish teaching for 15 minutes, for the rest of the class, when you are doing your assignment, only one person can walk around and teach you mathematics. That is He Guan. So instead of creating trouble, like I, I created trouble for every classes, this teacher empowers me, the command, and I help him. In fact, when some other of my classmates, they try to create trouble because of my command, I tell them, hey, stop that nonsense. You know, this is not only my teacher's class, it's my class, okay? And two of us will be walking around to supervise on their mats. So this is how I, I, I talk about command. And the other incident is this, is that there's a very uh, uh, interesting camp for those who are 15 years old. 
and there will be a selection process. And in this selection process, this very teacher became the uh, camp chairman. And uh, during the interview, I told him, sir, you know, I'd like to go for this camp. And he turned to me and he, and he told me that, Higuan, I know why you want to go to this camp. You are going to create a lot, a lot of big trouble for me. Okay? And I know that. And I asked him, sir, tell me, what should I do? Because I really like to come to this camp. And he, again, interestingly, he know my command and he said this, I give you a challenge. I said, wow. What challenge is that? I love challenge. Tell me the challenge. He said that you must be a leader in the team and your team must be the best. Is that a deal? And I told him, sir, it is a deal. And because of that, my group literally became the best group. So these, these, uh, these are examples whereby I, I coach uh, the students or the teachers to, to give them a, a framework, a mindset that even if you are a troublemaker, you can be involved. You can take up leadership. And this is something that is not usually accepted in the school because how can you give the leadership role to a troublemaker? And that will blow their mind. So I thought that is a, one example on command. That's a really powerful way of framing uh, a particular theme. Yes. And they were this really nicely done. Help, help us understand, you know, since you coach at a lot of universities and at, at high schools, you know, how do you work with students, with teachers and parents? How do you kind of incorporate all of that together? Interestingly, uh, I, I train students. I train uh, student leader. I train teachers uh, all the way from uh, uh, HOD all the way to the principal. And I train also parents. And the, there is a reason because whenever I approach uh, at any school who wanted to engage me as a strength uh, uh, coach, I, I will often tell them this thing. Number one, program to program, a strength-based program to another program, my program will be much better. However, strength-based uh, philosophy is not just a program. What I can do is that I can change your school culture. And we know that in order to change a school culture, you need to train the student body, the student leaders, not forgetting the teachers and the parents. That's why it is very important for me to empower all these three groups so that there will be a transformation in the culture and not just delivering a outstanding program. Yep. Thank you. We'd love to hear some sort of an insight or aha moment that either you got or maybe you help a student or a teacher or parent you know, get as in part of your coaching um, sessions. Interestingly, one of the uh, aha moments, it is I coach myself. This is amazing. Yeah, I, I want to say that actually uh, there's this, uh, the uh, five days accelerated uh, coaching course. To me, that is an initiation into the strength uh, movement. Yeah, because people will be asking, why should I attend this five days course? You know, uh, in five days, can I learn everything? No, you would not learn everything, but you will get into the initiation to be exposed to the strength language and also to the community. The second thing I believe is strength coach need to go through a, a point where I call it the baptism of fire. And that is your personal enlightenment about how strength can change your life. I give you an example. I have a special need uh, son, and uh, it took me, it took my wife and, and I uh, a long time of uh, intervention to help him in order for him to be able to sit, to stand, and finally to walk. And he started to walk at two and a half year old. And uh, interestingly, uh, my strength uh, are, are these, uh, my dominant strength, I give you a few. Command, strategic, futuristic, significance, self-assurance, belief, maximizer. Wow. You know, when this thing come together, I, 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 I use one word, the inspiring father. I gave my son this name, Yao An. Yao is to shine forth. An means peace. I want to groom him to be a young man that he can bring a covering of peace to the nations. But my wife, 
look and and hear her strength. Very interesting. Her strength are harmony, adaptability, restorative, empathy, developer. You realize everything is different for me? Yeah. And because of that, the way we groom our son is so different. At two and a half years old, when he started to walk, I wish he's walking 50 meters away from me. Young man, go and explore the world because one day you're going to take the world. But my wife will hold his hand whenever he's walking. And I will stop my wife. I said, dear, please don't hold his hand. I don't want to a, a groom a son whereby his mommy's boy. How can a mommy's boy change the world? And then we have a major conflict, big conflict. My wife will look at me and, and look at me as if like, huh? My son finally is able to sit and walk. I can't even hold his hand because to sum up my wife's talent team, I use the word nurturing. A, an inspiring father and a nurturing father. But there's one big problem we have major conflict. And because of the conflict, I'm asking myself a few questions. Number one, is she a great wife? She's a wonderful wife. Is she a great mother? She's so wonderful. And, and, and ask myself, am I a good uh, father? I am, I believe. Am I a wonderful husband? I am. But why are we fighting? And I told her, I said, why not you take do your strength? And uh, she did her 34, I did my 30, I've done my 34. We went for a one-day retreat at Sentosa, the most southern part of Singapore at this tower. And we map out our theme contrast. And to my good horror, I realized that there is one major problem. The nurturing mother never put on any bias strength filter and asked the inspiring father don't groom the son this way. Hold his hand. She never did that. But a strength coach like me, said to say so, at then I put on a bias strength filter and I told my wife, don't hold his hand. And I realized that, oh, is this because I am so biased? I put on the strength uh, a filter and believe that the world should be this way. I should wish to groom our son only in my way and not her way. So from that day onwards, what has happened is that no more conflict. Because of that, my son is able to have a nurturing father and an inspiring father. Because before that, I'm actually telling the nurturing mother, do not use your strength. Do not be a nurturing mother. Stop that. Try to be like me. Wow. I thought we are teaching people not to do that. And I realized that as a strength coach, I was doing that. So I believe this. A strength coach needs to go through his own baptism of fire, being enlightened and have a change of heart, change of mind, change of philosophy, and start to really learn strength. Not just cognitively from the five days, but really open up your hearts, be ready to be immensely changed by the strength language. Thank you, Iguan. That was a really powerful story. I see that you used some interesting tools, you know, um, when you were coaching um, your wife and your, and your child. Um, Jim, you know, Iguan would have shared a slide. We would love to uh, have a look at them and, you know, help him kind of help us through, see how he uses some of the tools as part of his coaching exercise. And also when he talks about his, his own baptism of fire, how he was able to achieve that. So if you could just play that across. Maybe yeah, give, give me a second to cue that up here. Just a second. That's fine. Keep yeah, talking so, and I'll cue it up for you. Help us understand how do you kind of set it up, you know, um, once you take uh, the other person, in this case your wife, through a strength finder, you get their report in. Do you kind of first have a conversation with them or use some of these tools that you've kind of, you know, innovated on, um, sure. use that as an introduction to them about their strengths? Sure. I think number one is that I start to uh, introduce the quick reference to my wife so, so that uh, she have a basic understanding of strength. And the other thing, uh, instead of just uh, giving a, a, a major contrast like an inspiring father, a nurturing mother, actually I do the team contrast one at a time. And if you take a look, actually, uh, I, I purposely show this uh, uh, slide instead of a nicely uh, type out one because this is the really the one that I use 
in Sentosa. I want to show to people that this is real. It's not something that I prepare uh, for this uh, 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 broadcast. And uh, actually, uh, if you look at just for example, maybe a ten by ten dominant theme, probably we could have come up with a hundred contrasts. But uh, I, I focus on a few. Number one, if we can uh, go to the one where my wife has harmony and I have activator. Harmony is someone for my wife is I hear from everyone before I decide to act. But for me is I act first and listen to others along the way. One of the conflicts where we usually have before we have this reconciliation moment is that uh, she would like to uh, talk to me about different things to, to, to hear me out before she actually wanted me to do some household chore, for example. And usually I'll be the one who, who will tell her, tell me what you want to do. Okay, just tell me and I'll do it. So because I thought that for me to be responsible husband means I just do whatever you tell me and I'll activate it. And then don't need to tell me. After I'm, I've done it, then you tell me the reason. It is okay. Even if you don't tell me, it is still okay. So this is a major conflict point that we have often. But after reconciliation, then I realized that, wow, she's so nice. She is hearing me out before she said, dear, can you help in the laundry? Right? So the second one, second uh, contrast. Okay. Second contrast is this. Okay, by the way, uh, I think the, it's not showing uh, on the slide uh, because of some uh, adjustment. Theme contrast, it ends with a complementary, uh, con complementary relationship or conflict in relationship. So the other word is conflict. Yeah. Second thing is this, adaptability and futuristic. Usually, she'll come and then she'll flow with the dynamic circumstances. And I will get a bit upset. I'll tell her that, didn't we agree? Have we not planned with the big picture that we are going to do something and reach this destination? Why are you changing? Actually, this is her strength because of her adaptability. Before that, I thought, oh, she she's going against what we have uh, 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 agreed that uh, uh, with regards to the long-term plan uh, that because of my futuristic. No, she is not disagreeing with me. She's just having another strength whereby she's able to flow when the situation uh, changes. The third one, she has restorative, I have self-assurance. She would like to tell me about little problems here and there. Oh, can we do this? Can we fix this problem, that problem? And to me is that, well, nothing, there's no problem in the house. Why must we fix all these things? Are you asking for trouble? Are you finding troubles and problems? There's no problem. Then uh, that was before uh, we have this reconciliation, I, we, we always have this conflict, but right now, to me, is that, well, there really is no problem because she has fixed most of the problem. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought that's very interesting. Another contrast. Let me go to the next one. Empathy. Interestingly, when we uh, train our son, my son is uh, pretty stubborn, uh, a bit like me. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, I would like to direct my son's development and behavior. Certain thing I'm not happy, I just uh, try to use my command and uh, uh, give him a direction and say no, yes, you know, and, and tell him what to do. But so sometimes it doesn't work because he is as strong as me. Interestingly, my wife will adjust her approach based on my son's emotions. And she'll tell me, right now, cannot use this approach you must use another approach. And I sometimes didn't agree with her and I get into big trouble. My son will fight to me in that sense. But for my wife, my son will actually listen to her because she's able to empathize with him. So now that we work together, at, at times, uh, command works for my son. I will use it. At times, my wife will say, I need to take over from you. And I jolly well move aside and let the empathy do her wonderful work. Yep. And uh, let me go to the next one. She has consistency, and then I have significance. And for her, she likes to do the, the same thing again and again. And I choose to do things that can create impact. And now I'll be telling her before that is that, hey, this thing is not creating any impact. It's, it's not impactful. Why are you doing all these things? But for her, no. You want something that's impactful, 
you do something slowly but surely, repeat it again and again, and that will yield its result. Before that, I don't agree. Now, I love her consistency. Last but not least, she has developer, I have strategy. She will celebrate every incremental growth in my son. And for me, I always ask myself, I want to develop him through the most efficient way. If it's not the most efficient way, I will not want to do it. But now think about it. Isn't it true that even the most efficient pathway, you need the developer to celebrate the little improvement? And I think it's very important because of special need. A um, son probably take three months to have a one uh, uh, evident growth for, for us to celebrate. And if we don't even celebrate three month growth, I think we'll get burned out very easily. So it is so important that uh, my wife is celebrating all the growth uh, in my son. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That was a really interesting way of putting it. I love how you've kind of used both the wheels and built a car around it and yes. the whole family moved mm. forward. So what was your logic behind creating those two wheels in the car? Help okay. That. Yeah. Actually, uh, we started this in uh, the Singapore's uh, Strength Coaching and uh, we have a, a wonderful uh, coach, Joseph from Malaysia. He's one of the most outstanding guy who uh, like to draw diagrams. So he, he did a lot of things and one of the things uh, he did was uh, uh, the car. So I thought that's very interesting. The wheel must go in the same direction and then uh, you realize there is a direction and then uh, in, in, in inside the wheel you realize I write the, the, my son's name Yuan. Yeah? And actually that is the context. So because a two person, you need to, to contextualize. What are you talking about? Is it uh, to teach a group of students? Is it to run a project? And in this case, is to groom my son, Yuan. So we need to have the same direction so that we can reach the same destiny for my son, Yuan. And in fact, after this, I invented my own because I realized that at a side view, you see two wheels, but actually there are four wheels. So I uh, invented my uh, uh, contrast bicycle. Okay, it's not in this uh, diagram. So I have a bicycle whereby there is two wheels. So this is my latest two. Perfect. Yep. And how do you now apply this when you are doing your own coaching with students, with parents, with teachers? How does that kind of fit into the whole model? And how, what sort of insights are you able to help people see through yes. this model? Um, using theme contrast, I think one of the most important thing I feel uh, and this is usually the most powerful uh, piece that I, I manage to help people, is that number one, I'm transparent. I'm telling people that it doesn't mean that you are a strength coach, you know the strength language, means you really know. So I'm telling them that there's a point then I really learn strength. Yeah. So I think it's important to be humble and to, to show people that you, you are growing in the strength journey. Yeah. So the, the second thing is this, is that um, there are many incidents whereby, I, I quote the first incident. Before we, I went to Batam, uh, this island resort for, uh, for a group of people, and the CEO told me, said that, I have these two staff. They are wonderful staff. They are such good staff, however, one of them will be crying most of the time. And that's unbelievable. And as we are conversing, I suspect that theme contrast really is the key issue. So when I coach the team using theme contrast, I show my vulnerability, and then after that, one week time, the CEO told me, said that one of these staff who is like me, having a bias strength filter, told her, I want to have a time of reconciliation with this colleague. And the rest is history. They have wonderful relationship because of contrast. The other thing uh, after this I evolve is I do a, a table so that there's a matrix. Well, uh, in my wife and my case, for example, almost a 10 to 10 uh, dominant theme will be about 100 contrast. But uh, for some other team, because they are new to it, actually I do a 5 by 5 that is 25 contrast. Well, then they won't be able to do everything if it's in a group setting, but if it, if it is in a, a, a coaching of a pair, then we are able to craft out a lot more so that every of these contrasts in the matrix 
out every of these 25 uh, boxes, uh, what we can do is that we can have a, a, a conversation and there'll be a lot of enlightenment. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. Um, also, you know, as you see, um, you uh, we've seen that you work with a lot of universities, yes. a lot of students, high schools. You no, know, and there are many other universities who are now starting on this journey of yes. incorporating strengths as an induction tool for students and helping them see what they're good at. How do you introduce Strengths Finder to youth in many cases? You no, know, and what sort of reaction do you get, and how do you help them on that journey? Um, the reaction actually in the beginning of the uh, I. I started this movement about uh, more than a year ago. The beginning is that uh, a number of people they have not heard about strength, so they are a bit like, you know, what is that? Uh, uncertain. And in, usually in the uh, educator uh, education scene, people are fixed with certain type of model and leadership model, especially or life skill model. They would not want to change. Uh, but interestingly, uh, there will be early adopters. So the early adopters uh, will actually pick it up. Sometimes they say, why not you roll it up uh, for a, a, a cohort of 14 years old or for my leadership or sometimes it's for, for some uh, teachers. But the interesting thing is, is right now, just after one year and three months in Singapore, a lot of people are starting to talk about strength because my team is uh, advocating strength uh, across Singapore over the, the uh, uh, two to 400 schools, depending on uh, where you're targeting. And people are hearing about strength and uh, people are interested about strength. And I believe in two years' time, strength will be the number one tool in Singapore school. Great. And um, you've uh, pretty much coached over 2,000 students yes. uh, within Singapore itself. You now, for new coaches who are you know, getting used to get introduced to strengths and uh, want to coach students, what is your tip or advice to them? How do they start coaching youth? Interestingly, when I was uh, in the coaching course, because the coaching course is one-to-one uh, -one coaching, uh, but my skill set, I've been training uh, leaders in university for. 20 years, yep. So what happened is that my uh, the way I see a lot of training, it is very different. Because for youth, you need to uh, be able to communicate to them in the tens, in the hundreds, and in the thousands. Because they like movement. They And uh, youth are excited when there's a wave, there's a movement, they're excited. They are part of a big movement. And advocacy program is another interesting thing. And then uh, for youth, uh, experiential learning uh, activities are important because through these activities, uh, the learning outcome will be surfaced and then they can learn uh, much better. And the reason why I'm able to coach uh, last year 1,300 and this by now this uh, three months, uh, uh, set another 700 to make it 2,000 uh, youth is because I have 20 years of youth training experience. I write curriculum for youth, I train youth. And I realized that there's one piece that is uh, missing uh, for a lot of uh, coaches because they are executive coaches and they train, uh, one, uh, they coach one to one and they train very small group of people. But I've been training like, uh, in a setting 50, 100, 1000. So that is why not many people can enter into the youth arena. Uh, number one, you have to be, you are, you are able to engage the youth and speak the language. And number two, you must be strong in, in uh, experiential learning activities to, and uh, strong in facilitation. is not teaching, not downloading, not instruction. And then uh, uh, the third thing is that you, you must be able to have a, a big team of people who are good in that. Yeah, so uh, I'm in this business for so many years. So I, I think if one day I can contribute to Gallup probably is to to train the world coaches who want to enter in the school uh, arena, how to engage youth. And uh, that will be interesting. <laughs> Thank you for, for the bigger mission that you have of you know looking towards youth development at Gallup as well. You know, I think we are uh, passionate about you know not just you know focusing on one sector, but right across, right from youth, right up to uh, adults as well and corporates. We work very closely with helping them develop. Yeah. Um, um, Jim, do you have any questions um, for he Kwan? Yeah, actually, Kurt Liesfeld is out in chat tonight, so he's he's out there listening to this. And Kurt asked this question to go back to your metrics. He asked, "How are the contrast metrics calculated?" So you said you you put some metrics together. How do you calculate those? 
Oh, I, I'm just doing a basic calculation. For example, uh, if I have 10 dominant theme, my wife have another 10 dominant theme, and if they are different, then there will be 100 of these, 10 by 10 matrix. And then if uh, I have 5 and my wife have another 5, and if they are different, and then again, 5 by 5 is 25 uh, contrasts. That's how I do it, yeah. Okay. All right. You'll have to show us, yeah, maybe maybe give us a diagram at some point that we can put in it as you as you write sure. this out. Because I, I yeah. think there is a lot of value. What I like what you're doing is a lot of times when we go into strengths talk, when we're talking about it, it just is that it's talk. And what I like is you've put some real diagrams to it, right? You've yes. you've you've drawn it out, you've made some examples on that. And I think we could probably do more of that in the strengths community where when we're talking with people, we make diagrams that make sense. So yeah. I encourage you. There's a lot of information you just covered there. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to this again uh, because you gave so many great tips. Yep. Sarov, I uh, from this point, I you know I I don't have any more from the chat room uh, at this point. They they're they're still trying to digest the information that we got in here. So so uh, Higuan, great job on kind of filling us in and giving us some stuff. Let me throw it back to you. Do you have anything going on? What's going on in Singapore and, and what's coming up? Actually, we've got a uh, no, couple of courses lined up right from our Accelerate Strengths Coaching course lined up in April from 20 to 24. So people who want to sign up can go on our website, gallopstrengthcenter.com, and look at all the courses available in the region. We have courses in India, in Singapore, in Australia, uh, in Hong Kong. So you know, do, do um, Go online and research more about them, or just drop us an email at coaching at gallop.com to learn more about them. Um, also, before we close out on Higuan, Higuan has a couple of you know theme contrasts. You know, we love to hear how do you utilize your own themes and how do you contrast them. If you can share more on that before we okay. close out the session. Uh, please intercept me because I have many examples, real life example. Now maybe I will not uh, focus on contrast. I give uh, some examples of some uh, aha moment for some of my clients. Yeah, uh, The first one is very interesting. I coach a group of uh, 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 key personnel in the school, uh, principal, the vice principal, and the HOD. And the principal has this uh, intellection. And uh, in his closing uh, speech, he actually told them that, oh, today I learned something from Mr. Tan, and uh, that is my intellection. And he told the staff, do you know why that Whenever you come to my office, after that, I will end with this statement. Let me think about it. You know, this phrase, let me think about it, to some people is, eh, let me think about it and get lost. You know, So that is a, is a good phrase to say, uh, let's get out of my office, right? But for him, he said, when I say, let me think about it, I really mean it. Because I learned from uh, this uh, the strength coach four years ago, right? Uh, intellection is a committee in the head and this person need the personal space and to, to, to be able to allow his committee to meet with one another one brain but a full uh, a, a group of uh, people talking you know the committee need to meet and need to refine whatever information so I thought that to him is very important and the staff after that realized that he really means business when he say let me think about it the second example I'd like to give is this. I was training a, a, a strength coaches, and these strength coaches is uh, gym coaches. That means they, they pump muscles and other type of strength. And uh, I, there are two coaches, very interesting and good coaches. And um, I know one of their clients. I asked this client, who do you think is the best? And then this person said, I like this person uh, best. And this person whom she likes is actually having the, the strength called harmony. Why is that so? I asked her. She said, because whenever I told him that, oh, I'm very tired, it is too much for me, this harmony coach will find consensus and uh, so that both will be happy with the last part of the training. But this client will tell me, I dislike another coach. Uh, another coach. I asked her, why? Because that coach is a maximizer. That coach is... If you're not giving your 100%, sorry, it should be 150%. If you're not dying, you're not training. So because of that, she disliked this coach. And I, I coached the boss of these uh, two coaches. I said, now, think about it. 
how do you uh, distribute your client to your coaches? He said, oh, each one take five people. I said, if I am you, I will have a new strategy. A sportsman who wanted to try their best, even if they have to die, they have to, to increase the 2% of uh, strength, give them the maximizer coach because this guy will push them all the way. But for those clients who come and say, oh, I just want to give my little best, not the best, you know, oh, I just want to enjoy gym, give them the harmony coach so that both sets of clients will enjoy your gym. Yeah, so that's another example. Am I running out of time? Well, we're pretty much towards the close of that, okay. but I think, uh, Jim, do we have time to fit in one more example? Yeah, one more. Let's, let's go one for more. it. Why not? Okay. You bet. Yeah. Um, another one will be responsibility. Responsibility, actually, the key question usually I ask is, whom do you think you will disappoint most in your life? And the number one person actually is your spouse. If you are operating at a raw state of your responsibility. And after I teach that, I remember I, I, I coach a team of people and one uh, gentleman, he looks something like a 50 year old, he came to me and said, Mr. Tan, thank you so much. I said, why? Tell me about it. He said that recently my wife came to me. She was so excited. Yeah, I, I booked a vacation package for our family. She was so excited. And then over the next two, three days, she, he heard from the boss that we are going to have a meeting. And it's right smack at the vacation date. And he went back immediately and told the wife, vacation off. And she was so upset with him. And then interestingly, this man, 50 years old, have not asked the wife, uh, asked the boss, number one, can the date be shifted? No, he didn't ask. Number two, am I needed? Must I be there? No, he didn't ask. He didn't ask anything. And he was so responsible in his work. And he went to the wife and took her vacation off. So let's not assume that being 50 years old means people are mature. Some people are using their talent team at 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 a raw state and they do not even know. In fact, I've done this a few times and interestingly, there are a lot of moments whereby this raw responsibility persons will come to me and say, thank you so much. Yep. On that note, you know, I want to say thank you so much Thanks. Um, to He Guan for a wonderful session. You know, uh, I learned so much in the session from him, the wonderful tools that he shared, the wonderful insights. I love the whole concept for intellection committee in the head. Maybe I'll go back and, and have my own committee in my head, explore <laughs> a little bit more of some of the things that he said. So thank you so much, Hikon, for sharing those things. Thank you, sir. Um, you know, uh, from here, thank you, Jim, over to you. You bet. Hikon, thank you again for, for doing Thanks. that. Very dynamic. I, I kind of wanted to sit here and listen to you for another hour. Uh, I, maybe we'll have to have you back on at some point and get some more information from you. So great sure. job. Want to uh, remind everyone to take full advantage. In fact, right now, if you're listening uh, to the recorded version of this, go grab a pen and a piece of paper because I'm going to give you a bunch of things I want you to write down. Take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center. That's just gallupstrengthcenter.com. That's really, really where the journey starts there at Gallup Strength Center. Uh, if you have questions about this, maybe you're watching this for the first time, you're like, eh, I want to know some more information about this. Uh, we've mentioned this before, but you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Uh, super easy to get that to us. And uh, as I mentioned before, you can catch all the recorded audio and video of this show, plus all the past ones we've done. And we've got a lot of videos. They're all free. You can go out and just listen to them. Uh, binge listen. That's kind of the new thing to do these days is go out and listen to a whole bunch of them all at once. And that would be all right, too. All those links are available on our coaches blog. Just go to coaching gallup.com. We have a brand new meetup page over there as well. Alex Wong is doing a great job of doing meetups there in Singapore and those go on at least once a month and he's very dynamic with those. So if you want to get involved in that, all the details, it, if you're somewhere else in the world, by the way, we've got uh, 20 other meetups going on around the world. If we're not in your city, let us know and we'll try to find a way to, to get that working in the city that uh, you are living in. And uh, you can also download our new StrengthsFinder app. So just go, if you have an iPhone or Android, go to either of the stores, search for StrengthsFinder, uh, download it, and put the email address in you took the assessment with. If you haven't taken the assessment with, you can take it on the phone. That's another way to get that done. Those are both available for you. Have your top five ready at all times on your phone. We'd love to have you do that. Those are available, of course, 
the app itself is free to do that as well. So I mentioned we got some courses. Those courses are listed at the Gallup Strength Center. Again, gallupstrengthcenter.com. We update those all the time. We've got them going on all around the world. And if you're interested in doing that, we'd love to have you pop out there and do that. We want to thank everyone for joining us today. If you've enjoyed this, please share it. Let somebody else know what's going on as well. This might be a really good one to share, by the way. So make sure uh, you do that as well. The links are available out there. And we'll look forward to the next Call to Coach. Goodbye, everyone.